writing about knowledge, which has been said several times throughout the presentation, we come across an article that was written by Sir Francis Bacon in his book, Meditation, Sacra and Human Philosophy, which was published in 1597, and he said, knowledge is power. And I want to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, certainly knowledge is power. Without knowledge, we will not be able to overcome the very many challenges that we are facing today and the very many challenges that we are likely to face tomorrow and the year to come. We need to sit down and get to know how we can allow knowledge to get through to all operational groups within our environment society. Son of Salatio and Esnat Maswai of Rao Chivi, Jeffias Matunu attended his primary education in Chivi and later transferred to Blawayo to complete his secondary and high school studies. Having graduated in various tertiary education programs with universities such as the University of Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe Open University and University of Fortier, it was enough to call him Dr. Matunu. Dr. Matunu has made significant contributions to the popularization of science through disseminating ideas in his book and various papers he presented both in Zimbabwe and abroad, particularly on rural poverty and development. His writings encompassed ideas on how universities can play a part in eradicating poverty in marginalized rural areas. Dr. Matunu is one of our best social scientists within the Midland State University and he has done a great work uh, in a number of areas that include the following rural development, HIV AIDS and poverty reduction. His uh, works have been uh, well received within the social science community and this is evident in the number of citations that uh, his works have, uh, have received. And uh, as a faculty, we are very happy to be associated uh, with him. We are happy that he's uh, one of our colleagues. And uh, besides, uh, his, besides his research, he has also done great work in terms of uh, supervising uh, postgraduate students. He has a number of uh, PhD and master students whom he is uh, supervising. And uh, most of his students, again, work in areas related to his areas of interest, that is uh, HIV AIDS, rural development, and agrarian issues. Dr. Matune and I work together in the Department of Development Studies. He is the current chairperson of the Department of Development Studies. Um, we've learned quite a lot from him. One thing that I could say uh, I've benefited as an individual person is that of his passion and dedication to work, which is so, so, so phenomenal and which has also transformed us as members of the department. Blames his willingness to empower us as the youth as young as I am, I'm now someone because of, also because of him. This is something that I will always really appreciate and uh, I would always like to say, I believe that the future is so bright uh, for Dr. Matun. I believe um, with regards to wherever he might go in life, I think the sky is always the limit because he's someone who has got so much initiatives, he's someone who's full of passion to achieve, he's someone who's full of immense vision to succeed in life and not only his success, his success but the success of others. Dr. Matunu is not only an academic but also a philanthropist who endeavors to see emancipation and empowerment of poor and underprivileged young people across the country including university students at Midland State University. Dr. Matunu is you don't even understand. If I try and tell you, I just don't have the words for it. But for me, personally, he came as a guiding angel. He and Sister Matunu came as, as guiding angels because I was at a point when I, it was a make or break moment for me. I needed fees or else I'd drop out of school. But he came through for me because they are helping me with my fees. And for me, that's just a huge step. It's a future, it's a foundation that's being laid down for my future. So I really, really, really appreciate what they're doing for me. What Dr. Martinez has done, especially in the school 
just to less privileged students here at MSU. I consider that a great achievement. I appreciate you so much. Considering the economy of Zimbabwe right now, we have got brilliant students who are out there. We have got a passion for feeling. And uh, education has, to me has become something like a invisible investment. You might not see how exactly, but in the end, they are forced to be here. So I want to believe that Dr. Matu has managed to do something that many of our lecturers, even in this session, cannot do, cannot even afford to do. But he has ten, stood out as an outstanding figure in promoting child education. Um, it, it, it's a sense of accountability for me because now that I've got these people that are helping me, I have got to play my part in working extra hard and making sure that their resources don't go to waste. I, am, I really have to do my best, that's one. And then secondly, um, I've always had a heart to help people, but I guess I just didn't have a direction of how to go about it. But with what they're doing for me, I certainly know now what the direction that I'm going to take. I'm, I'm also going to help somebody out there um, who needs fees, someone out there who needs serious help for their future, especially for the young people. I mean, after all, we are the future. In trying to live up to his dream of seeing emancipated young women, Dr. Matunu is paying fees for seven primary school students at Nyemeza 9 Primary School in Chibi. On behalf of the school, the staff, and even the learners themselves, we are quite appreciative of the initiative, like we are putting it right now. Uh, actually, we have had a series of dropouts due to failure uh, to pay some school levies. Molek Jack is my name. I'm the chairperson of the Nyeretsa Night Primary School under SDC. But on behalf of the parents, we are very much happy. We appreciate the help which is given by Dr. Matunu. It is the first of its kind to our community, and we wish we could find more Dr. Matunus in our area. Dr. Matunu has pumped out money from his pocket to support the less privileged. So we thank him very much. We, we are looking forward to have examples of people like Dr. Matunu. In our community. The assistance that is given to the uh, girl child or the seven girls that is at, at the station uh, is much into assisting the society uh, socially, morally, academically. Yes, he has added on top of it one of the books that we are missing. This is the living and working together. So here is a soccer ball and this is a volley, uh, sorry, netball ball a netball and a volleyball uh, for the teams. Actually, we have many disciplines, but as a gesture, uh, we really thank him for that. The kids are going to learn other than spending a lot of time doing nothing, doing nonsensical things. They will spend a lot of time uh, committed to sporting and academic activities. Besides uh, research, and also the help that is offering to underprivileged members of the community. Dr. Matun is also offering prizes to graduating students at uh, honors and master's level. And this is the J. Matunu prize that is offered to the best research or best dissertation at honors level and best dissertation at master's level. So as a faculty, we are very happy with this uh, support because we are always looking for support, we are always looking for research support and also want our students to be motivated to do great work and uh, Dr. Matun is assisting in this endeavor. But what motivates this man of goodwill to do this to people who are not even his relatives? I grew up in a very, very poor environment, grew up in a poor family and so on. And so, like I mentioned uh, somewhere, uh, when I wrote about uh, my background, that poor background brought me a sense of belonging. And when I grew up, I realized that whatever we get as people, we have to assist the underprivileged. And uh, this has been in my mind for a very long time. And uh, this is why I always go back to poor communities to be able to assist them. I realized that governments, non-governmental organizations of their own, might not be able to bring about any sense of belonging uh, among the people who are in 
our communities. And so as individuals, we also need to chip in because together we can make a difference in this world.